Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome back to Total War Attila. We're going to be diving straight back into the Medieval Kingdom's Total War 1212 AD Campaign Alpha. You can see we're currently playing on the campaign build V02 up in the top right-hand corner. So there has been a patch since the first one when you saw the France campaign. Basically, all this patch does is kind of fix a lot of the bugs that got created in the first campaign alpha, as well as fine-tuning a lot of the scripts that are already in the game. I think they've also added in a few more as well for England and France to kind of to simulate more of the, the rivalry between them two nations. As well as that, they've also added in minor settlements for every single province in the game. So every province is walled in the game, whether it's going to be a castle or just a city kind of uh, city custom map. However, custom buildings are not in the mod quite yet. They are planning on adding them. So right now, you're just going to be fighting over normal Attila custom, uh, normal Attila battle maps. However, when they do get the custom buildings in, we'll have custom maps, and I'm sure they're planning on doing it for every single faction in every single province in the game. So it's going to be absolutely awesome when they do finally add that addition. But for right now, we're going back to the old Medieval 2 style of walled settlements in every single province. None of these villages kind of scattered around and only one main wall. And I think that does fit the time period you know most most places on the map would have been fortified in some way or another and i'm sure they will replicate that quite nicely in the 1212 team so we're going to be diving in as castile in this playthrough and again our main objective is just simply to conquer spain there's no point going you know full blast for a full 200 turn campaign until that's ready at the moment we do only still have early game units in the mod itself they have all the other units ready to go it's just kind of fitting them into technology trees balancing buildings around them uh, so that stuff is going to come but you know at the moment they are focusing on simply completing the beginning part of the game which I think is a very smart idea there's no point trying to do everything you might as well do a section at a time that way you can kind of balance them really really well so I just want to also want to give a massive shout out to the mod team. We're already, what, the the first campaign alpha came out like two weeks ago maybe, and we've already got a pretty nice patch which is adding in a ton of, you know, bug fixes and new scripts and stuff. So they're working extremely hard to get this ready uh, for you guys, you know, whenever that might be in the, in the coming months. So yeah, I just want to give a massive shout out to them. They are really dedicated, and I think this mod is going to be one of the hands down best Total War mods of all time. I don't think there's much question about that when it is complete and I think the team is going to complete this you know it's not going to be one of their mods which are kind of left here and there it's going to come out in its full glory at some point so yeah I just want to give them a massive shout out this is definitely going to be one of the greats so as our as playing as Castile we start off with a pretty interesting historical battle if you've not seen me do it before Basically, we have a really cool battle at the beginning of the game for a script where we have to defeat the Caliphate uh, with the support of Aragon and also with the support of Navarra. Where basically the Christian Lords have come together as actually a proper historical battle and we have to, you know, win. And it kind of decides the fate of Spain, which is really, really awesome. For our faction mechanics, we do get a cheaper upkeep cost to noble units, which is going to be nice. And also military order units, I guess, because we are technically crusading in Spain. So we do get cheaper. So we're going to see Knights Templar and Hospitaller Knights actually arriving in our, our factions. As well as that, we do also get 10 morale against fighting Muslim factions, which is nice. Uh, we also do get a nice little boost to our exp uh, unit experience as well as range for Javelin Cav. Uh, so that's not too bad either. Bit more aggressive. We do, however, get plus one squalor, which is going to be a little bit bad. But, you know, I'm sure we'll be able to deal with it. So let's just dive into the campaign and kick off this battle so the battle starts immediately as soon as we jump into the campaign we do get thrown into the battle of oh, i can't even remember what it's called i'm sure you guys will know i know all about it i did read on it but i, I can't remember what it's called and i'd probably butcher it if i did try this it's like last something uh, but yeah, it's a very, very cool way to start a campaign. I actually made a video on it. I think it's the way that Total War campaign should start. And here we go. We have uh, obviously my Castilian army right here with the support of the uh, Aragonese and also Navarra as well. So all the Christian kings have come together in Spain to try and push out the Caliphate. And I I've said this in my other video, but I love the way that this does start. It kind of speaks to you as like, 
this is the battle for Spain. If the Christian lords lose this, then the Sunni Muslims will be able to basically control control the area for some time and the Christian lords will be on the back foot and vice versa. And I think that's just such a cool way to begin a campaign. So yeah, we have a pretty decent army. We're leading the kind of main contingent. We even have some Portuguese nobles here. So even the Portuguese are coming in. Yeah, some dismounted Portuguese nobles over here as well. And also some Spanish Order Foot Knights. So we do actually have some proper military order uh, units as well. Going up against the Caliphate, we also have a lot of skirmisher cavalry. Wow. We don't really have a lot in the, in the way of infantry. So it's going to be a heavy knight battle for sure. Um, not night as in dark, as in like night. <laughs> it's going to be a very, very interesting one. And I think the AI still has issues with this battle. Again, obviously it's in campaign alpha. But I think, I think they made this a little bit better than it was when I did my video on it a couple of days ago uh, talking about it. Because when I did my video on it a couple of days ago, it was just horrific. Come on, we don't want to fight in a the rain. There we go, a nice dry battlefield in Spain. I think that's what we want to see. So yeah, the nice thing is our reinforcements will come on. So we actually have two reinforcement armies arriving onto the battlefield, which will be perfect. I guess we will just form up our battle line uh, like so. So let's go ahead and get these. Oh, it's also super bright. Apologies about that. Let's just turn that down a little bit. Hopefully that's a bit better. Yeah, that was super, super bright. I guess we are in Spain, uh, you know, where it is quite sunny. We'll have our infantry behind. Our crossbows are going to be a pretty valuable part of this battle, you know, firing. And we also have some pikes as well. Let's stick these pikes on the left-hand side. And then we have a ton of cavalry. This cavalry is going to be so important because of the fact that they have so much crossbow cavalry. We need to try and pin it down and kill it. I mean, yeah, our mounted force is very, very big. Let's start a battle. We do obviously want to wait for our reinforcements to come on, and they're going to wait for their reinforcements to come on as well. And whilst we're doing that, we can take a look at some of the units. So we have some of our heavy shot horsemen right here. Then we have some Portuguese knights, which are over on the other flank. The Portuguese knights looking very, very nice. I dig the look of them. And then we have some Spanish order knights as well. So we have our military order right here. And these guys should be cheaper because of our Spanish start. Then foot knights as well. I love the Portuguese. They look very cool. We're going to have to give them a go at some point. And it's cool how they are represented as well in this battle. And then some of our other just Spanish order foot knights. Crusaders arise. Yeah, the rest of our infantry is pretty basic. Just some normal Spanish spearmen. These guys obviously don't really look like they have much armor on. So... They're not going to be that great. And then we have some levy crossbowmen again. Nothing too special. Oh, we do have some normal crossbows as well. These guys are a little bit more heavily armoured. Got some chain mail on here and there. As well as uh, a queef. And our king sitting back here as well. There he is. There is Alfonso. Leading the Christian lords, hopefully, to victory. And then we have our allies moving there. Making their way onto the battlefield. So I did initially want to do replays for a lot of these battles in the campaign, but unfortunately it just doesn't work. A lot of the time they just crash. Um, the Attila replays have been ruined for a long time now, literally since the game came out. Which is really annoying because it would be so amazing if I could fight this battle and then bring you guys the replay. But it just doesn't work and that's one of the other numerous things wrong with Attila Total War. So that is Aragon right there to my left flank. And then we do have uh, Navarra right here as well. So let's go ahead and start advancing towards the enemy. Uh, again, I'm not sure if they do still mess up or not. They might. Because when I was playing the other day, the AI just like clumped up their entire army right here. The reinforcements, they just couldn't handle it. Which is, you know, absolutely fine. Makes sense. But let's continue just to push forward our army and we'll see what we can get done. So we're going to be advancing our army a little bit fast now. Trying to get it in their faces before they can really form up. But we will start marching. I don't want to exhaust my men, especially my cavalry, that early on. But moving the cavalry forward is not a bad idea. Just to scout away at the enemy position, get eyes on, see what they're forming up. Are they going to be messing up? No, it kind of looks like. Yeah, it looks like they're, they're forming up properly now. At least this army always formed up properly. And then these guys took a lot longer to form up. They are very scary though. They have a lot of this javelin cavalry which will devastate my lines if I'm not careful. Also, one of the amazing things with this like battle is think how awesome this will be in a head-to-head -head battle. You know, you start off a campaign. One of you plays as Castile, one of you plays as the Caliphate. And then immediately you're diving into this huge battle. And that's just like, like how good is that to start a head-to-head -head campaign? 
Like, that's, that just sounds amazing to me. Like, I really think that it's just such a good idea to do something like this. Because there's already so much on a stake, and you're advancing forward. So you can see all the AI. The AI is going to be attacking soon, so we should probably advance our forces just a little bit as well. Does seem like, yeah, it does seem like the AI can handle it now, though, which is great. Again, as you can see, this is an alpha. Every single patch will continue to fix stuff. So let's advance forward. This cavalry scares the living shit out of me, but I'm, I'm not going to lie. Horse Arch is javelin cavalry. I'm not sure how well we're going to do that. The Aragonese are shifting to the right flank, which I guess I'll kind of take as well. Also, who's attacking who in this battle? I think we're attacking them in this battle. They've got a lot of missiles. Yeah, look at that. Look at that cavalry line off to the right flank. That is very scary. Um, I'll probably just go ahead and tilt my cavalry. I do still like the idea of having more cavalry over here. But let's actually just shift some more horse down to the center. Oh, and again, they'll have the same cavalry line. I just can't see it. This will all be cavalry as well. So they're going extremely long with their horsemen. I kind of need my allies to, to form up on me. I can't go too far into them as they will just collide. And I guess we need to kind of spread our infantry line a little bit as well. Because if we don't spread that infantry line, we will be getting, like, it just, in, but they definitely outnumber us quite heavily. And I'm tempted to stick my missiles on loose formation, but I think they're fine for now. We'll just wait for the rest of Aragorn and, and the Navara to, to move up. And Aragorn do have some pretty nice men as well. They have some crossbow cavalry of their own. Lots of these other, you know, horsemen and stuff, so that's fine. But the thing is as well, you guys got to remember, we're, we're playing in the early period in this battle. So a lot of the units aren't going to be the super tanky knights that we're used to seeing, you know. The armor is going to be a lot weaker on these dudes because, I mean, these guys can't afford it. But also the, the armor itself isn't going to be super high tech at this time period, you know. There's not going to be any kind of more professional armies or anything. So a lot of the units we're using are going to be kind of trash. And here we go, they're moving up now. I'll hold the center, I don't mind doing that. I kind of want to shift my army just a little bit off. Let them kind of take care of that. Okay, let's kick this bad boy off though. We, we've been kind of fannying around for far too long. Let's advance forward. I'm shifting my cavalry over in case they charge me. I mean, if... Oh, imagine how awesome this would be. If this... If it was a six-player six multiplayer campaign. And imagine if... Or maybe just drop in battles. Oh, I'd love drop in battles. Imagine diving into this and in a campaign and then dropping battling all six of these factions. How cool would that be? That'd be, that'd be amazing. Okay, let's just advance into their formation. Uh, get our crossbow shooting. Also, if you're wondering how I'm moving my army like this, all you have to do is hold down alt um, with everything selected. So select everything, hold down alt, hover over a unit, and just uh, click and drag. And you can do that. It's a, a nice, easy way. So our crossbow should be in range now. Start unloading. We're going to take the first couple shots, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and focus down their formation. And I'm tempted. They've got a lot of crossbows on that flank. I'm tempted just to kick this one off. I'm going to let the AI charge in their infantry and kind of be the, the fall-on hope. Um, and then I'm just going to react to it. Wherever the, wherever the AI goes, that's where we're going to go. And I'm sure we'll be enough with our crossbows to, to beat them down. We probably should form up loose formation now, but as I said, it's kind of okay. You guys should shoot another unit of crossbows right there. The light bow infantry that they have. Oh, these guys look amazing. Look at them. Really like the look of them. Their infantry line shouldn't be as strong as ours, and their cavalry's a lot more skirmisher heavy. Okay, looks like they're going to go hard right here. Yeah, so maybe we should address our formation right there. Yeah, the enemy's throwing in a lot of their cavalry. Let's go ahead and commit a lot of our horses over here, and we'll commit that spare unit, these, uh, the spare unit of cavalry over here as well. It looks like the cavalry fight has, has kicked off. Let's just dive in here, try and get one unit to go around the side a little bit. Catch them, catch them, horses. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Nice smash right there into their battle line. This is such a big battle. We have to play it on slow-mo just to get the full kind of feel of it. They've already managed to kill a lot of these guys as well. Over on this other side, I think we have to push forward our, our infantry line now as well. Um, like, because the AI seems like they're kind of heavily going on this side. Let's do that. We'll throw up this cavalry as well, see what we run into in the woods. Um, the infantry is moving up. Missiles continue to just, uh, I guess, hammer this big bulk of infantry. Maybe even the javelins wouldn't be too bad. I also wouldn't mind charging into these, this crossbow cavalry over here. How are we doing on this flank? We're chasing down a lot of their cavalry, charging in our own horses, breaking through the front lines, hitting into, into some of their stationary horsemen. That's good. The battle has gone up now. This is epic, man. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we need to try and kill this. A lot of this bow, bow cavalry is going to be you know, very light and be able to outrun me. But just getting these guys away from the battlefield 
is going to be kind of nice. Yeah, we're throwing cavalry into these crossbows if we can help it with our infantry pushing forward. Infantry should be definitely running now as well. I need to get in their face. The king can sit back though for now. He doesn't necessarily need to do anything too crazy. And it's just this fight right here needs to go in our favor. And it should. Our knights are heavier. They have a lot more kind of skirmish cavalry. But we have a lot heavy, like a lot more heavier lance cavalry. Whereas there's a lot, there are a lot more hybrid. I feel like a player would do much better with this army than, say, for example, the AI does. The AI kind of doesn't really know how like to use their cavalry that effectively. Again, just killing these crossbows is great. Even though I'm gonna have to fall back there, and she's pushing forward, which is again absolutely perfect. We'll form up something like that. This cavalry unit can maybe go after these crossbows. My allies are going in as well. We have Navara charging with their heavy horse. Against what looks like some pretty heavy cavalry there by the Caliphate. What do they have here? Some Junao Nasara. Not a bad cavalry unit. Again, we'll spread out our formation just so we hit this unit a lot more effectively. Engaging against their heavy cavalry horse archers. And we'll just charge in there. Seems perfectly fine to me. Imshi's formed up now as well. Let's form up our shield wall. Oh god, we got absolutely ganged here. That's not a good feeling. But we'll reinforce it with a lot of infantry. And probably maybe form up our formation a little bit more as well. I want to send some spearmen to these fights. Spearmen over to this fight as well. Or billmen over to this fight. I mean, I want my swordsmen. I want my swordsmen here. I want my crossbows again focusing down whatever we can back here. And our cavalry needs to be winning. This balance of power bar is very, very even right now. They've just got a lot of missiles which are going to be very hard to deal with. And, I mean, this army as well. Is just, oh, we have a unit of cavalry back here as well. Get your asses over here now. Where do I want it? Probably on this flank. If I can win this flank, then it'll be much more effective. And we obviously have our king as well. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh, my God. Our cavalry just got absolutely ruined there. Don't know what by, but it did just get slaughtered. We have reinforced with more spearmen, but I don't know if it's going to be enough here. They've got some good swordsmen there. We've got our own good swordsman mode charging in, so I can't complain. Our cavalry is winning in a lot of these other positions. They're just not winning fast enough for my liking. We might have to start using our king, deploying him to the battlefield. Yeah, more infantry charging in there, which is fine. Missiles hitting their missiles. Spearmen moving in. You guys can go in as well. We make sure we keep our dude alive as well. Our king you know, cannot go down to missile fire or anything. That would not be too healthy. Nice. Cavalry's one right here. What do I do? I think I smash into these guys, right? I smash into the missiles. And I think these guys... Now, these guys need help. The, the javelins and that are really hurting. Okay, sorry. We're, we're kind of all over the place right now in this battle. But as you can see, it's a very important battle. No, no, no. We need to reinforce this with our king. We cannot let these spearmen break. These spearmen are currently holding up a large portion of the enemy infantry. And they're not even fighting that much good infantry either. That's not good. That's not good at all. Come on, boys. Hold the line. Infantry moving up as well. Infantry can go ahead and take part in this. Our king can move up as well. Yeah, their morale is just so much better than mine at the moment. Javelins are doing an okay job. Okay, javelins. I mean, missiles. I don't even know where to hit these guys. Do they have anywhere close to routing? Oh, yeah. We want to war cry this big bog. If we can route this big bog, it should hopefully prompt the AI into helping us. More cavalry as well coming over. Our German's probably going to be taking a little bit of missile fire, but it's going to be completely worth it as long as we can get um, as long as long we can get our general to war cry this area. There we go. Big war cry right there. Scaring the enemy. Let's get him out of there now. Crossbows continue to focus. We've got some more spearmen moving up. Yeah, this is a big bulk of cavalry, halberds, and you know everything else in the battle. The music's kind of stopped now in the midst of battle, but I'm sure that's absolutely fine. Nice, it's back up again. And again, this cu this is custom music made by D Trooper, the guy who does a lot of the scripts. He did a really, really good job at you know creating epic battle music. You know, editing music into Attila, as, as easy as it sounds, is extremely hard. So, um, yeah, massive shout out to him. That's not good. My front line is starting to break. My kind of lack of good spearmen is coming back to bite me. But we are throwing in more infantry to try their best to help out. And I might commit my king. I might commit the king over to his right-hand side. Nice. Killed a lot of these crossbows as well. Run them down just a little bit. This cavalry can go over there. You guys can chase them down. And then we can probably bring back a unit of horses as well to go and help out in the main fight. Vance power is starting to shift in my favor now. 
Uh, these crossbows can maybe just shoot something else. I don't really know what, but be my guest. More infantry coming in as well. Go ahead and help out in this fight. Can't believe this cavalry unit over here. What? Yeah, the Portuguese heavy knights are doing an amazing job right now. Duking it out against some of this other... I was saying she light cavalry, but even still, hey, they're, they're doing a great job. They obviously got a lot more infantry and even got some other these Granada knights as well going in to fight them. So they're doing a great job. I can't complain there. We just need to break this. And also we have obviously the military order infantry as well. Very, very good stuff. How's the cavalry fight back here doing? Perfect. Let's go ahead and support our brothers in arms right there. Some of the Navara cavalry. Um, so yeah, you guys go and clear that out. You go and finish that cavalry off and then we'll bring back some more horsemen. More military order horsemen coming back. I just need to keep these guys alive, honestly, with everything I have. Crossbow is doing a great job. Let's go and focus down some more of his cavalry. More spearmen coming back as well. Perfect. Did lose this unit of infantry again, but not really much we can do about it. I can probably go back onto normal speed right now. Battle was a little bit less intense. That's what I'm saying. It would have been so nice to go ahead and be able to do this as a replay, right? If we did this as a replay, then all of a sudden we could have just, you know, been watching everything really cinematically. Given we got here in time to support this, I'd love to kill them Bowman, but I think it's more necessary we hit this back line of missiles. And maybe even for our king. And yeah, if the king puts his helmet on, we need to go deal with this now that the Portuguese knights are finally broken. Let's move over to his left-hand side. They're by bread breaking by pretty heavily. Oh, this cavalry's one as well. Let's go and deal with this. Still fighting over there. Looks like a lot of their infantry are breaking now, which is great. I think their general has maybe been slain on the battlefield. Yeah, chase them down, boys. Push them into the river, even though there isn't a river. Push them into the mountains, I should say. Let's go around the side a little bit, and then we'll kind of come in. Even the king has had to kind of come around. I'm actually going to be really careful with him. I don't want to lose him. That would really suck if we did end up losing him. Come on. Enemy general's going down as well. Let's finish this off, boys. We've got this. This is for the fate of Spain. Fight for Christ. Nice. So we're charging there, which is good. Managing to route a lot of this cavalry. They've still got all of these horses left, though. Oh, wow. They, I don't over here. Okay, good. For a second, I thought that this unit lost. I was about to be very, very surprised. But we are we are smashing them into the abyss now. They don't really have a lot left. Yeah, only a foul. We, we definitely outnumber them. Our crossbows will, will hopefully you know, finish up a lot of their routing units as well. They're winning this, this bulk though on the left-hand side. I mean, it's where we've got our weakest units, right? And now the AI cavalry is going to go chase down. Navarra cavalry going through the uh, through the terrain, through the woodland. And interesting enough, like, I, I, tell you, I never really noticed, is this terrain does actually reduce... Yeah, look at that. It reduces the charge bonus and speed down to 75. And I knew that was kind of a thing, but I didn't realize it reduced the charge bonus. I knew it made you slower, but... This is something I've never looked at, really. And then, I mean, we should probably be taking this battle. You know, battle is not won yet until it's won. Anything could happen. The men are running. Stand and fight, damn you. And probably a lot of friendly fire going off now as well, as the AI continues just, uh, just to shoot into my ranks. Definitely, let's move our cavalry over, though. We want this cavalry to, to be diving into battle as we, we kind of push them off. And this has been like kind of like a proper battle, right? We had this big engagement down the hill. And then we shifted off into the right-hand side. And now they're kind of retreating to the woodland. And we're, we're pocketing around them quite effectively. This is a really, really cool engagement. And it's just a high-quality, high-quality, you know, design of a battle, really. And if only the, if the AI was smarter, it would be even better. But, you know, the AI is going to be stupid. There's nothing that the mod team can do about that. They, they, they do the best with what they've got. And the king, without even really having to lift a finger has won this battle. I did lose a lot of my knights, but, you know, my front line really did struggle, but the fact that now our cavalry can just chase them down is good with me. And, you know, this is what we're... We're 25 minutes into the battle, or into the campaign, right? And we, we, we've just fought the main big battle, you know? We haven't even dived into the campaign yet. And that's just so awesome. It really, really is. So hopefully our knights will be able to just, you know, cut down a few of these archers. As they try and flee. I'm sure you know, the rest of the reinforcements. Yeah, the cavalry up here are being engaged as well. 
Do I really even have much? So this unit's kind of back there. So I do want to try and save my units as well as much as I can. The AI is in a really, really tricky spot. The enemy AI, I should say, because I also have AI. Just want to continue this until they've run out. You know, kill a few more of them. Maybe auto resolve a little bit nicer. There we go, that'll be enough. So it was a close victory. It wasn't like we absolutely slaughtered them or anything. We took heavy casualties, you know. Our front line did not fare too well. We, you know, lost 1,100 men. Our AI, we kind of took the brunt of the assault though, by the looks of it. Rest of the AI armies did fairly decently. We definitely lost all of our front line, a lot of our knights, a lot of our horses as well going down. They, they did a lot as well. They, they killed a ton. So we take a look at our army. Yeah, we, we lost. We actually only lost one unit of cav uh, cavalry. Everyone else will replenish, which is good. And our II factions are pretty good. We slaughtered them, though. Yeah, their cavalry, you know, a lot of crossbow cavalry. Once it's engaged, our knights will just win the day. And we did kill one of the armies, did, and the other two will retreat. We should be able to now chase these guys down, I believe, um, and push them back. Or we could retreat back. I think we definitely want to kill the king, the caliphate. I think killing him is going to be very important, so we'll do that now. Also, Al Alfonso looks like an absolute beast on the campaign map. So we'll clear him out. Some good experience. Now, do we want to... I guess we do want to kill this army. Oh, it's actually, it actually needs a new general, but I guess we'll kill it nonetheless, right? Just clear these armies off. I'll have to fresh recruit them. Um, but the, the Caliphate is pretty big. I think we can see most of his territory at the beginning of the game. You look at that, like he has, you know, good indents into Spain. He also has all of this as well, you know. He has a lot of territory. We can actually see one of his other armies down here as well. Just a fresh army, but that's fine. So let's go back to uh, let's go back to our capital. You can see these provinces aren't very happy because they're being held by foreign factions. We also own most of Leon besides this place that Portugal have. Um, also before, so the thing is, something I need to mention. This is like one of the bigger complaints about the mod is a lot of people complain about places not being in the right position on the campaign map. I just need to address it right now before anyone else does comment. It is it is nigh impossible to move the campaign map, to move settlements. And even if, well, it's not impossible to do it, but it's extremely hard and also I think illegal to do because you have to crack the EXE. So you'd have to illegally like obtain the game to do it, which obviously they don't want to do because then Creative Assembly will be like, what are you doing? You don't do this mod anymore. Um, and tell them to stop. So in that way, they can't even do it. As well as that, they think they don't think the AI would even recognize if you moved a settlement. Like the, the AI is not very smart. So it would be like, oh, I'm just going to run over to where this place is, even if you move the province. So maybe it's something they'll be able to do in the future. But, you know, it's something you just have to bear. And I think, you know, it's just a minor inconvenience or a minor issue. You know, most places are, you know, relatively okay. And now that every settlement is walled in some way or another, I think it's absolutely fine. You know, I don't think it's really an issue um, or something to, to get upset about. They also changed a few of these trees as well um to to better fit it so you know in, in our france campaign we actually managed to get like golden experience units so now uh these trees have been adjusted a little bit to make you know militia or more ammunition or recruitment so they've done this and this is just a placeholder right now they are planning on fully updating these trees at some point in the future um when they've got the time to do so um, I think they also adjusted these as well a little bit here and there. Nothing too crazy. But yeah, I, I'd really love to see, you know, in-depth uh, trees. Because right now with Attila, you can basically get every single thing on the skill tree. It's just kind of an order of what you do it. So I would love to see a big skill tree of like government ones where it's like and like more than enough government ones. So you have to pick on what ones you go down and military ones, recruitment ones, logistics. I think stuff like that would be cool and I'm sure they will do something like that. So we've got a few household items as well for our king. So we got shield bearers, more, ammo, uh, more armor for commander unit. I'll take it. Melee defense for commander unit. And also more armor for them. So they're going to be chilling with 30% more armor. It's going to be a tanky ass general uh, for sure. But let's finish up his level up as well. So he's got wealth from agriculture. Not really that important. Let's just pick up the uh, authority. It's kind of nice um, to, to grab that. Um, oh, what? He got more. Po he leveled up twice. Oh, great. Then I'll take that. Um, then maybe zeal. Enough zeal would be nice. Actually, no, let's go. Let's do this so we get the extra 10% campaign movement range. Should have got it before we moved. But we are in friendly territory. So with our buildings, what do we have? So we have a Jewish community here. Um, does... 
I'm kind of tempted. Oh, no, they've changed it. Okay, good. Oh, no, so wait. Yeah, no, it does give more, more Jewish culture. I'm actually tempted to change this because... Because we don't, like, we already have pretty contested areas, and I imagine having Jewish influence, yeah, Jewish influence is going up and it's reducing ours. So, as much as this is nice, how much, we're making two grand, I think I can afford to change this. And we'll change it to something else as well, which will be pretty nice. Um, probably, maybe a bullfighting ring. It's kind of a cool building, and it also gives us experience for nobles. Let's do that. Um, yeah, it also gives us public order, and what does the tree go down to? So then we get kind of a best, bigger arena. And it gives us a ton of money as well, so we're actually be making more money. One of the cool things about the Jewish community building, though, is it gives you interest on your treasury at the end of each turn. So, for example, if you had, like, 10 grand, you'd get a percent of that every single end turn, and you could stack it with the rest of these Jewish buildings as well. So it's kind of like having banks, which I think is kind of cool. Over in Leon, what do we have? So we're going to market town up here to the north. We have a library, uh, which gives us some good research rate. Training grounds. Don't think we necessarily need a training ground because most of our units will be built elsewhere. So I might actually just completely destroy this building and build something completely different. And then we have, what, a field? So farms right here. Okay. So probably just good fa good farms, like... Probably just, yeah, wheat farms out here. Which will be fine with me. So let's build a wheat farm out there. Technology, again, as I said, uh, the technology is currently at four times rate because the game is going to be one turn a year. And again, if that's not your style, they will be adding in, you know, I'm sure there'll be mods that make it four times a year. But just to kind of fit the period, they want to go from like early, you know, 1212 AD to like the 15th, 16th century. So, you know, to get to that point where you start having guns and stuff, they, they need that to happen. Family tree, we have what, two daughters, uh, three daughters and an heir as well. Our son is uh, eight years old. We can also marry our daughter, which I might do. Um, a lot of these models as well, pictures will be changed as well, so no need to worry about that. So you just have statesmen. So let's look. We want to have some governors right away. We have our two provinces. So do we have anyone who gives us good culture conversion? That's the question. Oh my god, this dude is 70 years old. Oh my god. Diego, the living legend. So you're, you're going to be a good army recruiter for sure. And so the bottom two are going to be good army recruiters and everyone else is kind of just like authority. And then we have these guys as well. Strategist, cunning, Patreon, more money from culture buildings, and strategist. So I'm actually going to put Diogo down in Castile Nova because we have that uh, Colosseum, that bullfighting ring being built. And then this guy with just more authority can go down here because having more authority is good as well. And then what we'll do as well, oh, Diogo is now unhappy. Why are you disloyal? Because something, household or something? Oh, you're spurred. Lost status and prestige. But I just made him a... I just gave him a position, right? I just gave him a governor position. That's kind of weird. But that's fine, nonetheless. We'll do these governor points next turn. Oh, we can actually pick a few of them in right now, but not the guys I want to, which is fine. Um, I guess... I mean, Diego is a governor. Um, So I guess we'll stick a few of these guys in here as well. Just to get them into positions, right? And then the other two, the two governors can go in then a little bit later. Our army's moving back. Technology's done. So let's do diplomacy really quickly as well now. Um, so who can we trade with up here? So let's see. Just Let's just go with trade. Uh, just two, two other people who we can trade with now. Some of the Italian factions. Well, if we offered you a little bit of cash, a little bit of cash money, I'd be happy to do. Cool, because that, that'll pay for itself in a couple turns. We'll, we'll be making money. And then Sicily as well. Um, yeah, sure, we'll trade with that. It pays for itself in a couple turns as well. So we nicely got more trade coming into the Empire, which is perfect. Uh, a little bit on happiness. Can we recruit any agents? I would love to recruit an agent. We can't quite yet, but that's fine. Uh, then we have edicts. I think what we'll do is... Oh, no, because I want to convert them, right? So you have a really nice religious toler tolerance edict, which goes ahead and reduces the unhappiness by... Uh, by not having the major religion, but then also increases that religion a little bit as well. Do we have more of a, like an aggressive one? Uh, we don't. So let's just go with the... Hmm. Let's just go with this. Construct war, rural houses. Gives us a little bit more, more, more money and growth, and we'll do that in both our regions, I think. Yeah, let's do that in both our regions. 
So that would be a really good trait that, that this one would be re religious tolerance would be really good if you've just like taken somewhere in the Holy Land or something maybe, or even just if you've got a ton of Jewish population, that would be good as well. Or if you just had a ton of your own state influence with loads of good priests, that would be good. Um, this will pop up next turn, I think. Cause, oh yeah, so there's a few things as well. Oh, Aragon taking land as well against the Caliphate. I guess it is free, and maybe we should be a bit aggressive as well. But now you can't just you can't just smash into a city. You actually have to siege it out and build equipment. Again, it's like that medieval two style, which is something I really really dig. So mission issued: the Kingdom of Spain. So we can now form Spain if we own all the regions in Hispania, which is what we're planning on doing. Um, except those initially. So we can we need to hold everything in Spain, including Aragon and also. Um, Navarra, I believe, except these ones that Spain hold, uh, that Portugal hold even. And then we'll form the, the King of Spain. We'll get that bonus of 10 turns, which will be really nice. And we'll, we'll form Spain, which is, again, a really cool event they've added in. You can do this with the Byzantines or to form the Byzantines. I believe the English have a, a, a similar event to form some something. Um, and it's just a really, really cool thing. And we become the Kingdom of Spain. So that's going to be the objective for this. We'll decree our own stuff. To bring these guys into power. Our governors should now be up here. They can't move in. Oh, we don't have enough influence right now, which is fine. Um, does anyone else have enough influence? Not quite yet. Um, yeah, his, his, I mean, he's not really going to be a big issue, but it's good to always have people loyal, you know. And most people are. We just need to boost up our own influence first. I'm sure after taking a few settlements, we will do, do exactly that. Oh, did we not change this? I could have sworn we were changing this to a bullfighting ring. Did I, I swear I clicked it. Maybe not. We'll do it anyway now. Just to, again, give us a little bit of money from culture. Oh, but maybe I just want a church here. I think actually just fuck it. I want a church here. We'll destroy this and build a church. Do we do need that? We've got one building going up here. Again, a military barracks here I just don't want. A nice little church up here as well. We don't need too much. It does say we can recruit a priest though from this. Oh, we can recruit one from here. Okay, perfect. Then we will get one. Uh, whoever gives us the most... This guy. And we'll get him down here immediately to start converting the populace. Like, immediately. Because up here in the north, we're, we're fine. We're a little bit unhappy, but nothing too crazy. This army is still very much replenishing. So let's move our army into the uh, position. We can only recruit a few kind of weak infantry. Uh, mercenaries still aren't in the game as well. But you can see noble units. So yeah, let me run through a few of the scripts if you've never seen this so far. Is they have war wariness has been completely revamped, which is awesome. I think I actually missed a few of the, uh, the things because we had that beginning battle. So war wariness has been changed to be a lot more effective. So if you're at war for a long time, that will start to plague on you and you'll be kind of encouraged to make peace, which is cool. You also have papal standing. Uh, we can probably see them better here. Yeah, you can also have papal standing. Uh, so the more you do stuff with the Pope, the better things will be. Um, and uh, the Fifth Crusade does fire soon as well. So, you know, the Pope will like you more if you join it. And as I said in the beginning, you can also go ahead and pump up uh, your crusading army to make them more effective on crusade. Uh, we also got this as well, something I didn't notice. Because we won the, the victory at Las Navas da Taloisa, I said it with more confidence that time, but I think just as wrong. We now have uh, a little bonus, some more integrity, more morale, and also replenishment. That's kind of nice, um, but we, we gained that. Uh, we now have papal standing, war wariness, and, and food surpluses, which is good as well. So, yeah, keeping the Pope happy is extremely important, extremely important, and something we're going to have to try our best to do. Can we stick these armies on Crusade? Is there a way to do so? Go to the research tab, records tab even. I don't think so. I think we have to be... I think we actually have to be on the Fifth Crusade. But, I mean, we're technically crusading down here in Spain, so I don't know if there is a button somewhere to do it. I'm sure there is. Um, and Because um, they did say they added that in the next one, so I'm sure there will be a way to do it. But anyway, at the moment, we'll replenish our army, and then we'll look to, to strike out. I actually would love to take this if I could. It's not under siege by the looks of it. Aragorn has gone back home. So we'll get like a turn or two of replenishment. I guess recruit another unit of spearmen. Um, and then we'll, we'll march on this place, because that's part of my region. I do really want it. And a lot of their armies will be rebuilding elsewhere. I will be so this is a, a migrating sultanate right now. He's he's currently a yeah he's currently doesn't have a city. 
and he wants a non-aggression. I'm going to say no. You know, we're currently obviously playing the role of Castile. We are very, we are very Catholic. I think the next faction I want to play as well after we do this one is going to be the Sultanate of Rum and try and make the Byzantines with them. Um, or the Ottomans, I don't know what like what the tra like train they have. Um, but I think that'd be a lot of fun. So here we go. The fifth crusade um, has been called Pope Innocent the Third has proclaimed a new crusade. Crusade, and we can now join it. I believe recon. So we've also got a mission as well to uh, um, yeah to reconquer some land. So what do we need to do here? Ensure that the entirety of Spain and Peninsula is owned by Catholic factions. So even just by owning this, so we have our main one to form Spain. And we also have this one, just reconquer, reconquested or, or reconquista, I should say. So basically, if, we, if every Christian lord takes this entire province, we get a nice bonus to it converting them, basically, and pushing out the, the Moors. That's cool. A really, really cool event for Spain. I dig that a ton. This army could go now, I think... I do really want to take that out, but I think we're just going to chill for another turn and bring him down as well. Um, public order is actually... When we've got an army garrisoned here, public order is good. We'll destroy this as well and build a church next turn. Um, start converting this. Uh, levies being built. Wheat fields being done. Oh, yeah, we should have also destroyed something up here. Yeah, perfect. So, what? oh, iron mine. Yeah, 100% we get the iron mine. Because that is really good. Definitely want to use that. I was going to be able to build something else up here, but the iron mine is just too good not to get. Um, and then I guess also, I'm all because we're building an iron mine. I'm actually going to convert this to the sanitary one. So this one uh, to the Catholic priory, I think, um, because this will give us more sanitation, and we're going to desperately need it. We don't want plague to kind of outreach throughout the entire empire. We want to avoid that as best as possible. Especially as we continue to upgrade our buildings, we, we really want that. So England are at war with France, and also the Caliphate is at war with the Caliphate. Or the Sultanate is at war with the Caliphate, that's interesting. Again, it's going to be good for us, because the Caliphate is going to get pushed back. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, no, as we sorted out our food shortage over here as well. That's good. And um, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if the Caliphate was too busy not to move men into the rest of Spain. I'm going to say, yeah. I think for now, that's fine. Defensive alliance with them is good with me. They're going to conquer land. To be fair, though, we are going to have to take their land at some point to form Spain, right? So it's not all great. Are they going to... If they cause some issues to the Caliphate, that would be good for me. But for now, you know, we want to hit that reconquesty... Uh, reconquesty? <laughs> Reconquest uh, of Spain mission first. So just by having ca uh, ca uh, Catholic lords take it, that's good. Again, I'm going to say no with these guys because I do want to kill them at some point. But again, we could just break it. But we might have a big riot. Disease outbreak up here. So this is a big part of the mod in the early game. You're not supposed to be able to manage sanitation perfectly in the beginning of the game to kind of represent the period. As well as that, because the technology is at times four at the moment, it's much harder to get the, the sanitation tech unlocked. Whereas obviously when the game does come out properly, it'll be much quicker to do so. So... We're going to have a few issues with sanitation for now. But as you can see, we are slowly fixing that with the church priory. I don't think it's too much of an issue. Uh, bring this dude down a little bit as well. And now move this army across. Fuckers, they're already there. I do really want that. And so then we want to probably move down here, right, then. I guess we'll move down here and try and take this walled settlement before anyone else does. Really hope Aragon doesn't siege out. This is the problem. Because we won that battle, we now have free reign over Spain, meaning the AI can also take my territory, which is something we were, we were hoping to avoid. And it's going at Catholic church, uh, Catholic yeah, church right there. These are all building perfect. Uh, food is actually fine. I'm going to destroy this and build a sanitation building. Because the nice thing is about the sanitation building is it also gives sanitation to everything it's touching, which I think is really, really cool. Aragon took that province away from me. I mean, Aragon's time will come, but our main objective in at this point is just to reconquer Spain. And once Spain is conquered, then we can look elsewhere. You know, then when then we can conquer, you know, the rest of the other factions. The we uh, we're gonna keep on saying no, even though it wouldn't be bad to have like Navarro and that on side to help me kill someone like Aragon because well, the disease is spreading. Yeah, disease is everywhere now. Uh, the Fifth Crusade, the Crusade for Cairo. The Pope has formally declared the beginning of a holy war against the Muslims in Egypt. 
Do we have do we have an option to join yet? I don't know if we do. Oh, there we go. This is so cool. They've absolutely smashed this one out of the park. So we can send this army on crusade. But I think unless we go... I'm not sure how it works. I'm going to ask before I click this button. So we'll do this next episode. But if I click this button, does this army have to go on crusade and have to make their way over to there? Or if I'm just fighting Muslims, is it okay? We'll have to see. But that's so cool. Like have, Just having something like this is just really interesting and unique. And it'll give them loads of bonuses, I imagine. Um, so let's siege this town out before anyone else does. We'll just blockade. We'll just you know, siege them out for a turn or two. Uh, build some siege equipment and probably end up auto-resolving that. We're going to have we're gonna have a few armies rising up as well in our empire because we have plague and, and the religious differences aren't good either. Uh, we'll stick him here to help start convert a little bit. Hopefully that conversion, yeah, the conversion is working quite nicely. And when this church is done as well, that should help out even more. But I am going to have to muster another army over here. And I think our main plan was to do one of these guys. Uh, one of the loyal ones as well. These guys got nine loyalty. Um, or do we have, we don't have a sum right now, we don't. Okay, well then let's uh, let's raise him. He's nine loyalty. Um, he's also forty-three, so he's kind of old, but that's fine. He is also good at melee, so it's kind of the main focus. We'll stick him inside the town and we'll build up his army a little bit. We don't really have great military production because we don't have a military building here. But you know what? What you're gonna do? It wouldn't be bad to get rid of this library because technology isn't really anything that important. So again, I might destroy this. Like, at the moment, because we're using with four times technology, it's kind of like, what's the point of teching into it, you know? We'll get one or two in this playthrough. So we might as well change this to a military building or something. Um, and that'll be more beneficial to us as we continue to siege them out. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So cool, I think that's where we're going to go ahead and wrap up this series. Oh, this episode, not the series. We've got plenty to do in the series as we continue to try and conquer the rest of uh, of uh, Spain. Which I think we're going to be able to do kind of nicely. You know, we've got Portugal moving in. Portugal's about to take this. And then we just need to take, you know, these territories. We're about to take this. And then there's only really two more provinces left. And then we convert our provinces. And then it's a war to, you know, consolidate Spain and rebuild and, you know, form it itself. Which is so cool. I really dig that so much that we can actually form the empire or you know, the kingdom of Spain from Castile. It gives you just such a greater feel of your your campaign and your progression in the campaign itself. Um, also, it'd be interesting to see how the HRE does because they can now, they don't, they're not excommunicated, so a lot of their vassals will stay strong, which will be interesting to see what happens against France as well. So lots and lots of really cool stuff happening. And also on Crusade, it'll be interesting to see what happens um, when people, you know, factions are probably more likely to go and join the Crusade now that they have that button. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to drop a like and a comment if you did. And I'll see you guys in the next one.